Good morning. Welcome to worship. It's good to be with you here at our sanctuary as we gather together in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to celebrate the blessings God has given to us through his Son. Special welcome to guests and visitors. Glad you could join us for worship today. We ask all of our worshipers to please sign the Friendship Register. It's on the center aisle of each pew. You can sign it and pass it down to the others in the pew. Um, Please also take a couple minutes just to greet each other. Welcome each other to worship. Focus of Pastor Oftenberg's sermon today is Jacob wrestling with God, a dramatic account from the Old Testament, one of the great patriarchs of the people of Israel, um, literally wrestling with God. Uh, We often talk about prayer as wrestling with God, uh, struggling with doubts and challenges in our life, and as God invites us to do, we come to him in prayer in, in, in every situation, good times and bad times, we know our Lord is with us and he invites us to uh, enter his throne of grace. And he promises to hear and respond to our prayers. Maybe not always in ways that we expect, but certainly for our good and our ultimate benefit. So that's the focus of our service today. We'll begin with the responsive Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. We join together in hymn 723, when in the hour of utmost need.
Please stand. We worship here in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, as we stand in God's presence today, we know that we have done many things that God has commanded us not to do, and left undone many things that he commands us to do. Although we come as God's people, we come as sinful people who need God's mercy. So let us come before God's throne of grace and ask him to forgive us for the sake of his Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Almighty God, merciful Father, I confess that I have sinned against you in my thoughts, my words, and my actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I am distressed by the sins that trouble me and am deeply sorry for them. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Through God's son, Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Indeed, those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery, so that you are afraid again. But you receive the spirit of adoption, by whom we call out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself joins our spirit in testifying that we are God's children. Please be seated. This time we join together in the Charis Chorus. Worship team will sing it through the first time. The congregation is asked to join us the second time. Then the instruments will play through it, and then we'll all join together again for the fourth time. join together in the prayer of the day. Lord, keep your household, the church, in continual godliness, and set us free from all adversities that, under your protection, we may serve you with true devotion and holy deeds, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gospel for today from Luke chapter 18. Jesus told them a parable. 
about the need to always pray and not lose heart. There was a judge in a certain town who did not fear God and did not care about people. There was a widow in that town, and she kept going to him, saying, Give me justice from my adversary. For some time he refused. But after a while, he said to himself, Even though I do not fear God or care about people, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will give her justice, so that she will not wear me out with her endless pleading. The Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. Will not God give justice to his chosen ones who are crying out to him day and night? Will he put off helping them? I tell you that he will give them justice quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? This is the gospel of our Lord. Our next song, song We Bow Down, the worship team will sing through the entire song once, and then we'll sing it again with congregation.
Grace, mercy, peace are all yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A portion of God's word that we're considering today, taken from Genesis chapter 32, beginning at the 22nd verse. He got up that night and took his two wives, his two maids, and his eleven sons, and crossed over the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream, and he also sent his possessions across. Jacob was left alone, and he wrestled with a man there until daybreak. When a man saw that he could not defeat him, he touched the socket of his thigh, and the socket of Jacob's thigh was dislocated as he wrestled. The man said, let me go, it's daybreak. Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Then he said to him, what is your name? He said, Jacob. Then he said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have fought with God and with men, and you have won. Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. He said, why do you ask what my name is? Then he blessed him there. Jacob named the place Peniel because he said, I have seen God face to face and my life has been spared. So far, God's word. In the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, I'll redeem. Lisa Sandoval is a 12-year-old who lives in the state of New York. And this past summer, she was going to get in shape. Started to exercise wanted to do one of those from couch to, what, 5K races. And so she was training, so to speak, running for a couple of weeks, literally, before she entered in to her first 5K. That's about three miles. Well, the day of the race, they were running late. Uh, They were trying to gather up all their possessions. They piled into the van, arrived at the starting line a little bit late so Lisa got into the line with the rest of the runners the gun starting gun fired and off she went Lisa started her 5k race in the meantime mom took the van and and drove it around to the finish line to wait for Lisa to compete uh, to complete her race and there Lisa's mom waited waited and waited. After a while, she got really concerned. Lisa wasn't coming through. The rest of the the runners from that 5K race were crossing the finish line. Where's Lisa? Where'd she go? Mom got so upset that she started to to talk to some of the aides there at the race and, and the organizers. Everybody was filled with concern and started looking for Lisa Sandoval. Where'd she go? Finally, way, way late, they see Lisa coming toward them. Her face is beet red. She's got sweat pouring down her face, tears as well. Her hair's all matted. She's totally exhausted. Turns out that Lisa Sandoval was in the wrong race. Instead of it being in a 5K race, she had ended up in the half marathon race, which is like 13 miles. Same starting line, but different times. Because they were late, she got into the wrong race. You know, brothers and sisters in Christ, I wonder how many of us feel that way in life sometimes. You know, when we're young, we got all of these hopes and dreams. We got our life mapped out right there in front of us. But how often doesn't it seem that we got off the race? We got off the road that we had planned for ourselves. And and maybe it was because of our own sins. We took an exit off. And then... It becomes more apparent, I guess, when you've got those pressing problems in life and the trials and the pains. And and we wonder, the devil leads us to wonder. We cry out to the Lord, Lord, what's going on? You know, you wonder if Jacob, the guy in our text for today, you wonder how many times he felt that way. Can I 
Can I ask you to put yourself into Jacob's sandals here for a couple of minutes this morning? Here Jacob is. You're, let's pretend you're Jacob. You're sitting there next to the Jabbok River, which is really a, a stream. And it's slowly snaking its way down to the Jordan River. It's maybe early evening, the stars are starting to come out and you look up into the heavens and those stars are gleaming and shining like facets in a diamond. You listen to the calming sounds of the Jabbok River, you look at God's beautiful creation and it's just the opposite. That, that scene of peace and tranquility is just the opposite of what's going on in your heart. Because you can't stop thinking about tomorrow. Tomorrow, your twin brother Esau is coming to meet you. It's been like 20 years since you last seen him. And at that time, the very last words that Esau had said to you and to the whole family, Esau had said, when my father dies, I'm going to kill my brother Jacob. Now, 20 years later, he's coming to meet you. When you had heard those words initially, you left town right away. Your mom had said she had helped you run away, and she said, look, when the time comes, when Esau forgets all of this, remember Jacob has stolen the blessing and the birthright? When Esau finally gets over this, I'll send word for you and you can come back. But you hadn't heard a thing. Your mother had not contacted you at all. So is Esau still bent out of shape? Is he still harboring feelings of hatred toward you? You had sent servants to meet your brother, poured gifts upon him, trying to, to gauge what his demeanor was. But all the servants did, they came back, your servants had said, well, Esau's coming to meet you. He's got 400 men behind him. All your life, you've used cunning and deception to get your way. You've used those deceptive ways to try to trip people up, to kind of mold them to do what you wanted them to do for you, for your advantage. But now, you've got no answers. The playbook is empty. The night before, you had prayed to God, God, have mercy on me. Help me. Save me. And, and you're wondering, will God come to me? like he did 20 years ago in that beautiful stairway to heaven when he said, Jacob, don't worry, I'll be with you, I'll bless you, I'll take care of you. Will God appear to you in person like he did to your grandfather Abraham and literally put his arm around you and encourage you and strengthen you and, and say, don't worry about Esau? Well, as it turns out, none of that happened. Oh, you know, God came to you all right. But he didn't put his arm around you. He put you into a half Nelson. He threw you down into the dust. And like two kids on a playground, you're wrestling with the Lord who's taken the form of a human being. Back and forth it goes the whole night. Till finally, as the sun starts to rise, he touches your hip and, and just with a finger, dislocates that hip, and so you know he's got the upper hand now. And finally the Lord says, let me go, it's daybreak. So how do you respond? How do you respond to someone who's so powerful that they can dislocate your hip with just a small touch? You probably should have said, well sure, whatever you want. But you didn't say that. With tears in your eyes, totally exhausted, you quit wrestling with the Lord and you hold on to him, you grab him, you cling to him. And you say, bless me. I'm not going to let you go unless you bless me. Then the Lord turns to you 
and he says something that cuts you to the quick. He asks you just a simple question. What's your name? And immediately you remember the last time you asked for a blessing from somebody, your blind father, Isaac, had asked the same question. What's your name? And you had lied. You had said, my name is Esau. But now surrendering yourself to the Lord's will, you own up and you say, my name is Jacob. And God says to you, your name's no longer going to be Jacob, it's going to be Israel. Because you have fought with God and with men, and you have won. You know, brothers and sisters, there's so many things. So many things we could talk about today when it comes to this particular account. But here's one that I want you to take home with you today. How blessed is the person in life who simply puts themselves completely into the hands of the Lord. You know, let's be honest, people, we're like Jacob a lot of the times, aren't we? Sometimes in life, you know, especially now, I suppose, your portfolio, you, you know, when those letters come, the bank statements, you know, what's left in your account, you don't even want to open them sometimes, do you? Because you know the amount's way down. When we start to worry about those things and start to put all of our hope in, in those portfolios and the bank account or the job, we're just like Jacob, aren't we? When we start to think that everything depends upon us. You ever feel that way sometimes? I gotta keep the family together. I gotta keep this relationship together. I've gotta do it all. I've gotta be here and do that. I've gotta do this extra stuff to keep my job. When we start to trust too much in our own abilities and our own talents, then we become like Jacob, haven't we? And just like God wrestled with Jacob, doesn't he sometimes have to wrestle with us? How many times doesn't that happen? You've got some problem that's plaguing you. The devil's really after you. He's just creating havoc in your life. You feel like Lisa Sandoval, you're running the wrong race. What, what happened? When, when did I start going this way instead of the way I had planned? And sometimes it's our sins like Jacob, right? Sometimes we did it. And nothing seems to be going right. We offer up those prayers sometimes. We, those prayers, we say, Lord, help me like Jacob prayed. And it seems as though those prayers bounce right back down. Does God know what, what we're going through? Does he care about me? Does he still love me? Does he still forgive me all of my sins? You know, we're not alone in that struggle. Job, for example. Everybody talks about the patience of Job, right? Well, not so much, right? Job, in the book of Job, he says, I cry to you, O God, but you don't answer. I stand up, but you merely look at me. You turn on me ruthlessly. Or what about the words of King David? Why, O oh Lord, do you reject me and hide your face from me? Aren't those the words of people who know what it's like to wrestle with the Lord? I don't know, you know, what the particular circumstances of your life is, but if you wandered in here this morning and you're just kind of wrestling with the Lord. You've got, your plate is full. Problems, ailments, all kinds of stuff. You've got more than you think you can handle. And you've laid it up to the Lord. You've prayed about it, maybe for weeks and months. And you think nothing's happening. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I want to assure you that those problems that you're going through right now, 
God uses those things for a good purpose, doesn't he? You know, sometimes we're so blinded by the tears that we shed in life over our problems that we can't see always clearly the goodness and grace and love and mercy of God. He's got us always right there in the palms of his hands, holding on to us. And he promises, absolutely promises us in his word that when you offer up those prayers, they're not just going into thin air. He hears and answers every one of those prayers, maybe not in accordance with our will, but always in a way that's meant to bless us. I've got to admit, sometimes I feel like Lisa Sandoval, you know? You're running a different race. It maybe didn't turn out the way that, that you had envisioned and hoped and planned, maybe even prayed about. Maybe you feel the same way today. You know, when you've got those problems, people, when, when you just don't know where to turn, remember Jacob. Remember that God came to Jacob and struggled with him. And God left the glories of heaven and struggled for you on that cross at Calvary. The Lord Jesus gave up his life and, and lived for you in your place so that you might have joy now and forever. And if you're feeling down and depressed today, Don't look at your hands or your problems. Look up at the Lord. Don't count on your strength. Count on his strength. Don't rely on your faithfulness. Depend completely on his faithfulness. When those victories don't seem to be evident in life, remember his victory. The victory of the cross and the empty tomb which assures you that you're his child no matter what. When you do that, when you wrap your arms around the Lord and cling to him by faith, then you really will know what it means to be blessed by the Lord. May God grant that to each one of us for his sake. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding will keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us rise. We're going to confess our faith according to the Apostles' Creed and then we'll continue with the Wells Connection. We confess together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. I'm Wells President Mark Schrader. Ministry to the young people of our Synod is more important than ever. They're surrounded by a culture that's directly opposed to the beliefs and values they've learned since they were children. That presents them and those who minister to them with some real challenges. 
But no matter how difficult it may be, we know how vital it is to nurture the faith of a young person. One way that happens on a large scale is at the Wells International Youth Rally. As more than 2,000 young people gathered for worship, for instruction in God's Word, and, oh yeah, more than a little fun and fellowship. I think it's awesome so far. It's awesome. I really like it. That's two out of three. You got 30 seconds each round. Ready? Set. Go. There's certainly no shortage of excitement and enthusiasm at the Wells International Youth Rally, which returned this year to the University of Tennessee. I absolutely love it. I love how they have the bouncy houses because honestly, it matches my personality. But it's not all just fun and games at this largest regular gathering of Wells members. This year, there were over 2,000 attendees. Coyne did a great job, and then Pastor Westra, man, his message was powerful. We join together as God's children. We confess the Christian faith that lives in our hearts. I love, like, when we sing all together. It's so nice. I love it so much. I love just hearing everybody praising God together. When I think of the Wells Youth Rally, it's all these young people that are wondering who else is out there that believes the same things and to look around this stadium and see their family in Jesus and to be able to just make connections, whatever kind of connections they can make, they make and just celebrate being Christians together and celebrate having that true word of God and sharing that bond with each other. This four-day event gives teens the chance to be spiritually fed through worship and small group workshops, and encouraged through the fellowship of gathering with so many others their age who share their faith. What I really appreciate about a teen event, having all of our teens be able to come from our congregations gathered together because not every teen goes to a Christian high school. And just being a part of a community where they are surrounded by like-minded Christians. With this being a biennial event, however, there's a large gap of time between each youth rally. Four days of heightened, exciting spiritual nourishment and encouragement, and then everyone goes their separate ways. We don't just want it to be an experience at a cool place. We want to equip them. Uh, we want to equip those that are called and those that are willing to lead them and, and deal with them at such a critical time in their ministry. To assist local churches in encouraging the teens of their congregation between youth rallies, the Wells Commission on Discipleship is offering resources to help keep that fire going. The first is video-based materials that youth group leaders can use to plan this type of ministry. The other is a kit for putting on youth nights. Think of these youth nights as a youth rally experience that happens on the local level. The kit is a blueprint that local congregations can adapt and make their own to best fit their ministry setting. It is to, to bring about that, that sense of God's people getting together. It, it's not just necessarily kids from your own church. It's welcoming, it's inviting, it's getting kids from different areas and, and different places to maybe then sit down and to experience God's grace and to gather around his word uh, with other people that they might not often do. Adolescence is such a critical moment in the spiritual lives of Christians. These teens are coming of age at a time in history when Christianity is under attack, when following Christ doesn't seem to be what's trending. Whatever the different issues are that's facing them that my generation, you know, I don't even know. Uh, I, it's so new to me even, and, and I've seen a lot. Um, just to let them know you're not alone, and you're the here and now. Having so much fun and knowing that everybody like believes in the same stuff as me is so awesome. I cringe a little bit when I hear people say that the young people of our synod are the future. They are not just the future of our synod. They are the here and now of our synod. And I hope that they go back and say, hey, I am the now, get me plugged in. I want to be active, I want to be a part of church. I want to be a part of outreach. I want to be a part of 
building God's family and his community. We hope to see you at the next Wells International Youth Rally in 2024 at Colorado State University, where we'll be celebrating 50 years of equipping and encouraging our youth. In the meantime, resources for connecting with young people at your church can be found at wellscongregationalservices.net. The Apostle John tells us that those who believe in Jesus Christ as their Savior have the privilege to come to God with our prayers. I have written these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the confidence that we have before him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we also know that we receive the things we have asked from him. In our prayers today, we want to remember John Helen, who's facing upcoming surgery, Helga Miller Day, who's traveling to Arkansas for pain management. Uh, also, most if not all of you have heard about the death of our fellow pastor, our brother uh, Aaron Strong. Uh, he was driving to his congregation, Grace, downtown, um, reckless driver, plowed into his car, and he died from his injuries, only 40 years old. So we want to remember the strong family in our prayers. His wife's name's Abby, and they have two little uh, kids, Hannah and Elijah. Also, uh, Jamie Wendorf, right before the first service this morning, uh, was at home and ex was experiencing shortness of breath. So. She went to urgent care. We're praying that um, that has been resolved, but I haven't heard word yet. We want to remember her as well. We bow our heads. Dear Lord Jesus, in life, because of sin, our own sin and, and sin in this world, we face many problems. Like Jacob, some of those problems, we have committed ourselves and gotten ourselves into those jams. And sometimes those problems just come out of the blue. Lord, when we're under pressure, when we're feeling pain and, and hardship, remind us of the story before us today. Remind us of your goodness and your grace and your mercy. Even though Jacob held on to you by faith, you held on to him even more. With your strength and with your power, you made sure that everything turned out just fine for Jacob, his family, and you'll do the same for us. Help us to trust you, Lord, when we're down and depressed, that you have a good plan for us, that you will keep us on the road that leads to life everlasting, and you surely will keep your promise to work it all together for our good. We also remember in our prayers John Helen Almighty God, we commend him to your care as he undergoes surgery. We thank you for blessing doctors and medical workers with great skill. Bless their work on John's behalf so that he might enjoy relief and recovery from his affliction. We also remember Helga Miller Day in our prayers today. We ask, Lord, that you would give her a safe trip down to Arkansas and, and use the technology at our disposal today for her good, to manage her pain, to give her relief uh, from that pain and, and from her anxiety. And Lord, we also want to remember Jamie in our prayers. We ask that you would be with her and comfort her during this time, if it is your will. We ask that uh, any tests that she undergoes would, would be normal, that she'd be able to return home very quickly and, and resume her work for you, your people, and your kingdom. And finally, Lord, we pray for the strong family Lord, you gave the church a tremendous blessing in Pastor Strong, and, and you enabled him by your grace to preach your life-saving message, the gospel message, uh, to so many people during his time here on this earth. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for bringing him home to heaven quickly. Uh, Lord, we don't always know your ways, but 
they're certainly higher and better than our ways. So we're confident, Lord, that this is for the best, his best and, and the best of the kingdom. Lord, be with his wife, Abby, and their two kids, uh, Elijah and Hannah. Bless them and keep them in your tender care. Uh, during this time of crushing loss, direct their eyes to your empty tomb. Fill their hearts even with joy amidst their tears, uh, knowing that their dad, their husband, is, is now in heaven, and they'll be joining them, him soon. Uh, be with the members of grace. Help them, draw them closer to you through this tragedy. We pray all of these things in our Savior's name. Amen. We'll continue now with the presentation of our offerings. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we joyfully present to you our tithes and offerings today. We know that you own the cattle on a thousand hills and that the earth is yours in all of its fullness. We know that everything is at your disposal and you are not dependent on us in any way. Nevertheless, please receive this humble offering that we give to you with great joy and delight. Use this offering for the good of your people and your kingdom. Again, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us rise. Blessed Lord, you've given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We'll close with hymn 721.
Good to see all of you uh, here today. A special thanks to our worship team this morning. Just a couple of announcements to highlight. Uh, next weekend, we'll be collecting a, a door offering for Tatum Spiegelberg. Um, there's a write-up on Tatum, probably heard about her uh, through announcements and so forth. She's got huge medical bills, daughter of a pastor, Wells pastor in Colorado. Uh, we're going to try to, we will be taking a door collection to try to offset those medical bills a little bit. There's a Lutheran Women Missionary Society Fall Rally at Mount Calvary in Waukesha next Saturday. Uh, as you leave today in the narthex, there's a table. Uh, those are sign-up sheets to help with uh, Living Nativity that's coming up at the North Campus uh, early December. Um, also, Jackie Shock Snyder's here today, uh, which gives you the opportunity to talk to her. She's in charge of um, fellowship for the Joint Reformation Service the end of October. Uh, we need snacks and, and goodies for that, so if you want to just take a second to to talk to Jackie about that today if you want to help out with that. Um, we're going to have that joint worship in the gym. There'll be a lot of people here, so we want to have some refreshments and need help with that. Uh, and that is it for today. Lord's blessings to all of you. Have a great weekend.